So since I was young, I always had this dream to fly. Oh my way! Unbelievable! This is magic! But people now who were like seeing that, wow, anything is really possible. <laughs> Production of immense possibilities is made possible by the generous support of the Earth and Humanity Foundation. Wendy Selden. Rogue Co-ops, a community-centered collaboration among the Ashland Food Co-op, the Grange Co-op, Rogue Credit Union, and the Medford Food Co-op. Cliff Bar and Company. Elizabeth York and these additional members of the Immense Possibilities Community Builders Circle. Welcome to our weekly visit with people who are creating immense possibilities for healthy communities, solutions to all kinds of challenges. If I asked you to think of a metaphor for achieving great possibility, you'd likely think of flying. Back to the Wright brothers and earlier, the image of human beings soaring above the earth over expected limitations and commonplace thinking, it's been a kind of icon for possibility. Well, tonight we want you to meet someone who made that metaphor real. We want you to meet the boy who flies. My name is Godfrey. I live in Malawi and I finished high school a few years ago. I was lucky to find a good paying job converting old water pumps to merry-go-rounds. This way the village children can play and make life easier for their parents. This is good work, but ever since I was a little boy, my dream has been to fly like a bird. So I'm working hard, trying to save enough to get my pilot's license. Though at 25 cents an hour, that would take me another 35 years. Last year, Godfrey left his home in Malawi in southeastern Africa to sharpen his skills and come tell his story here in southern Oregon. It is a great pleasure to welcome to the program The Boy Who Flies, which is also the name of the documentary we'll be sampling with you tonight. Godfrey Masuli. Godfrey, welcome. It's great to have you here on Immense Possibilities. Thank you for having me. How did you become known as the boy who flies? So since I was young, I always had this dream to fly. And um, I finished high school and didn't have the opportunity to learn to fly. It was until about eight years after high school that I came across a Canadian man in Malawi. And he taught me to paraglide. And that's how he became the boy who flies. And he taught you and made a film, the film we'll be watching tonight, about, about that experience with you. He, the, you made the film with him. And it is also called Indizoteca, Indizoteca. Which, which means what? It is possible. That's kind of the theme of the film in your life, huh? Yes. At five, my uncle inspired this picture into my mind of becoming a pilot. And I grew up with this picture. And so even when I was sharing with people about my dream, even though they did not believe, every night I would go back home and look at this picture, consider this picture. And the following day, even though I, uh, I, I felt all this discouragement time and again, I would wake up encouragement by looking at this inspiring picture in my mind. And, and a turning point was when this, the Canadian Ben Jordan made the film with you, came to Malawi, and he must have seen something special in you. Wow, this, this is something that's really insane. So I'm in Malawi with a burning dream to fly, but no opportunity. And then um, there is Benjamin Jordan in Canada. And one day he just has a dream like to visit Africa and to teach someone how to fly. He had a dream, a sleeping dream about A this. sleeping dream about this. And at that point, he didn't even know that Africa was a continent. <laughs> and guess what? We are like 15 million people in Malawi. And out of 15 million people, I met him. I was walking back to my good friend Edward's place when I saw a funny looking white man running around with some newspapers and plastic bags up on the hillside. The children were cheering, so I ran up to see. 
But then the newspaper was well above our heads with a plastic bag swinging around it like a tail. He handed me the row of string without taking his eyes off the sky. Let the string out, he says. Let it fly. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He was just like the kid from my dream. Godfrey, this bright young man with a lifelong dream to fly. Now there are scenes in the film of you teaching school children to make these small kites. Why was that important? Why did you do that? We found it easier like, to spread the message across about um, achieving dreams or pursuing a dream through flying that way. Through soaring. You gave them the experience of soaring in a small way. Yes. <laughs> What did it feel like to have these crowds of kids chanting with you, it is possible, in, in Dizoteca, it is possible, it is possible. How did that make you feel? <laughs> it was satisfying, but it was also scary in a way. Because here are kids saying, believing with me that it is possible. And I'm here telling them that, you know, they can achieve almost any dream they have, yet I haven't achieved my dream myself. So I was like, um, in a way saying, wow, these kids really seem to be having faith in me. They're having faith that they can achieve their dreams. But what if I don't achieve this dream myself? Or what if I really don't make it? There were those negative comments like coming into my mind every now and then. So it sounds like not only were you telling them it is possible, it was important that they kept telling you it is possible. <laughs> exactly. You were both the student and the teacher. Yes, both at the same time. There's also a conversation in the film about the value of failure, a conversation between you and Ben, where he helps you understand the importance of failure. What happened? I don't know, man. Yes, you do. You, ju you just did it. What's, what, side, what side had the pressure? Come on. It's hard to talk about failure, man. Why? Because when you talk about failure, you embrace it. What's wrong with embracing failure if that's where you're at? You know, a person actually becomes what he talks. If I talk failure, I embrace failure, I'm going to become a failure. Yeah. But if, you're, but if you're failing and you're talking success, mm -hmm. then you're a liar. Yeah. And then you're going to become a liar. You need to acknowledge where you're at. You mean acknowledging this when I'm feeling pain and having these sores in my arms? Sure. The rises. Acknowledge it. And when I acknowledge the pain, when I, when I embrace the pain, I am, is it going to make me feel any better? Maybe the feeling of failing to raise the wing and then talk about it is, is, is not what's on. Well, it's what's going to work. If I do this, get it right and then talk about it. But now, <laughs> concentration on getting it right is what I want. But my style of instruction includes talking about it. Talking about failure. Hmm. We haven't been doing that. We've been doing Godfrey's method of not talking about it and saying, this time I'll get it right, this time I'll get it right, this time I'll get it right. Your method is not working. Let's try mine. Getting the perspective from Ben, um, I, I realized that there's actually the other side of failure. Like it actually, when you, when you know that this thing isn't working, in a way it's like giving you a message that that doesn't work, but there is another opportunity for you, you know, to approach the same situation. And you even reached a point where you felt comfortable demonstrating failure to the children, right? You got it, buddy. Good, keep going, keep going. Okay, hold on, stop. No problem, no problem. That impressed me because you sort of became a hero to these school children. 
And I think the, <laughs> most people would say, well, I have to stay a hero and not show that I fail too. That's been like the biggest challenge um, in my life. So to hide that and pretend like a hero who doesn't have any kind of fear, I think um, that's not being real. <laughs> so I saw you in the film telling these kids your plan to go to the mountain and jump off and fly. I wonder if you were setting things up that would make you do it so that you were you couldn't not do it once you told all these kids. <laughs> In a way, I was trying to encourage myself. So now you and your friend climb the mountain, and it is time to jump. <laughs> you have not perfected your skills very well at that point. People, I think, can look at that point in the movie and go, don't do it, Godfrey, don't do it. And you stood on the hill, and you decided to do it. remember about that moment? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It was a moment in my life when I faced my biggest fear. I remember moments when I was thinking that I was actually going to die or, you know, make it in the newspaper for the first time as the boy who wanted to fly has now, you know, it's, made it. It seemed likely that that could happen. <laughs> yes, I mean, it, it could have happened. <laughs> I actually forgot that I was carrying the camera and I was screaming. I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Unbelievable. All these trees. Oh, Ben. Oh, my weight. How you doing, man? Oh, man, this is awesome. I've never felt like this in my life. Oh, this is magic! <laughs> Unbelievable! Oh my word! Unbelievable! I feel like crying! <laughs> Can you hear the kids shouting? Yeah! <laughs> I start hearing the kids shouting, Lizoteca, Lizoteca. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, those kids now are able to see me fly. This must be meaningful to them. I just couldn't wait to, to touch down and then get to meet them and to hear what, you know, how, what, what that meant to them. I could see the kids, hundreds, maybe more, all running down the road towards my feet. I want them all to feel this, to live inside of their dream no matter how big it is. And if I can do this, I can help those kids do anything. He's a the ground suddenly became so real. Everything started moving so fast. I started to run, and then... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> it was a moment where, for the first time in my life, I saw like a different uh, village. I saw different people, not people uh, full of discouragement in themselves, but people now who were like seeing that, wow, anything is really possible. Now, do you think they, they will take that forward in their lives? Because it's possible they'll look at this as a special moment and you as a special person who's more courageous than they are, more heroic than they are. And it's nice that they got to see it, but they could never do that. Since after my first flight, I have seen kids who dropped out of school, going back to school because of my story. I have seen um, youth who like had given hope of life, like starting a small business and uh, pursuing their, their, their goal in life. So actually this is something that is really, I have seen in my life working to them. Because it's not just about flying, it's not about me, but it's about people, it's about them, like 
realizing whatever they can set their mind to do. What are the most common things that hold us back, that hold us down to the ground? It is ourself. You know, the, the disbelief that uh, we cannot do it, that's what I think really holds us back. Listening to all the voices that say we can't do it? Yes, yes. Would you tell us about your bracelet, please? So far, I have visited 102 schools in Malawi. And I reached a point where, in my own capacity, I couldn't visit other schools. And then I remember the day that I walked to an entrepreneurship seminar for the first time. At that point, I'd never done any kind of business. And the only thing that was in my mind was the word, it is possible. Ndizoteka, ndizoteka. And then I remember the next two days coming up with an idea of making these, these handmade bracelets, which say, it is possible, in our language, ndizoteka. As I talk right now, there are about 18 youth in our village who are making these bracelets, who have joined in this, and they are able to sustain themselves. They are actually, a few of them are actually able to send their siblings to school and to support their families through making these bracelets from recycled materials. That just say it is possible. They're showing exactly what it says on the bracelet. Exactly. And you know, what's, what's, what's really funny about this is that as the message, uh, as this positive message spreads in Malawi, and as more people wear these Nizotega bracelets, one way or the other, I think there is a big change that is happening uh, in the mind through just reading or just uh, immersing your mind with the word, it is possible. It's already started. <laughs> yes, it has. When your life is drawing to a close and you look back on it, mm -hmm. what do you hope to see for your contribution? What would you like to think and what would make you feel that you lived your one life in a really good way? My heart desire is to see a world of self-confidence. People who can believe in themselves and people who are just filled with love, you know, around that. People who can set their minds together and achieve anything that they, they, they set out to do. That's the kind of world that I would love to see. Godfrey Masauli, thank you for coming to tell us your story here and in our country, uh, for what you will do when you return to Malawi, and for reminding us that Indizoteka. Thank you so much for having me. This is Chris. Ask them if they believe now. <laughs> Canadian Benjamin Jordan, who is the main producer of Godfrey's film, isn't the only paraglider who decided to get involved with the life of the people below on the ground. The Cloudbase Foundation is a national organization of paragliders and hang gliders who are committed, in the words of their website, to improve the health, education, and general living conditions in communities where hang gliding and paragliding activities take place. One of its active members is Patrick Joyce, and he joins me now from his office in Indianapolis. Patrick, welcome to Immense Possibilities. Hi, Jeff, thank you. You live in a flat state, not exactly the paragliding capital of the world, and you drive many hours, lots of weekends to go paraglide. How come? I, I love it, plain and simple. Every minute up there, when you're suspended in the air without a motor, it's just magic. Tell us about the Cloud Base Foundation. How and why did it get started? Typically, when pilots travel to fly, we, we go places where uh, the weather conditions are really good for flying, but many of those places are, are fairly impoverished and uh, the people are, are under some hardship. And I believe they targeted children in particular in the beginning, and they worked to they work to help the children where they were flying. Now, I'm guessing this seems like an odd combination to some people. Here you have these recreational folks with a lot of material advantage and this state-of-the-art new equipment and this brand new sport traveling in places where people have no material advantage, barely, barely can subsist, and coming together in a way that matters. It, it, does that make sense to you in a certain kind of way? It does. I, I think the connection between the two is very important because if I place myself on the ground and I look up and I see someone flying through the air, I'm going to feel like that is uh, fairly 
inobtainable to me if I'm struggling to make ends meet. And so I see that connection as, as showing that person on the ground that, that, that we care and that we, you know, we're looking to give them a step up and hopefully enrich their life in some way and show them that anything is possible. I've been involved in a project in Honduras. We were scoping out places to fly and we were on sort of a little ledge looking at looking for a place to launch and this whole small village just came out to see what we were doing they expected us to fly um, and we there were about 30 to 40 kids in the group and we noticed that a lot of them didn't have uniforms on some were in school and some weren't so we asked some questions and one thing led to another and we found out that there was a law on the books in Honduras that you must have a uniform to attend school and that was keeping a lot of kids from attending and so there's a project in place now um, to, to get that school uniforms, uh, general supplies, and shoes. A lot of the kids didn't have shoes. And so the Cloud-Based Foundation is funding that project, but it's actually been the local pilots that have been established recently that are doing all the groundwork. They're talking to people and, and doing all the logistics, and they're actually going to be the ones delivering it to the school and, uh, and partnering with them. I'm guessing you didn't get into paragliding to do service work, and I'm wondering if the service work has enriched the whole experience for you. It certainly has. It's taken it to the next level. You know, it's one thing to travel somewhere and fly, which is incredible in its own right, but to, to take it a step further and be able to interact with the locals and, and enrich their lives, um, it really, really uh, makes it quite fulfilling. We are open to any pilots who are interested in getting a project off the ground. We welcome any ideas. We, we like to talk about it, and um, we're, we'll do what we can to make it work. What has a cloud-based foundation done for you? It's allowed me to go to some places that I wouldn't otherwise have gone and certainly meet people that I never would have been able to meet. And it's been incredible so far, and I really feel like I'm just getting started. Patrick Joyce is a paraglider with the Cloud Base Foundation. And Patrick, it's, it's fascinating to hear what you guys have put together. And I really thank you for telling us about it today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Jeff. And for IP Filmworks this week, we've selected the Cloud Base Foundation short feature film about our friend Godfrey Masauli's adventure. The Cloud Base Foundation is headed to Malawi to meet up with Godfrey Masauli, the country's only paragliding pilot not only for the flying he does, but for the work he does on the ground as well. We started our journey with a 1,200-mile road trip through southern Africa. We saw amazing sights along the way, ranging from Victoria Falls to wild elephants crossing the road, and countless other moments that we'll never forget. Together we've worked on programs ranging from education and clean water to projects like this, where we're working with Godfrey to develop a site to host a flying specific adventure tourism business. This business will push income directly into the community through job creation and increased tourism, while also forming the keystone for Godfrey's work on the ground, which supports local schools by inspiring students to follow their dreams. Paragliding can present some risks. So finding a proper launch site that Godfrey can utilize for his tandem business is going to be critical. You know, things started to feel good with the way we created the launch. It felt like a proper launch site. Like, because we had done some work on it, it, it just felt good. <laughs> I've never seen a beautiful launch like this in my life. His excitement, his joy, not only for flying, but for sharing flying, sharing the stories with all the local communities is 
just purely contagious. When people now uh, see that I'm in a position of being able to do what foreigners are able to do, it also like lifts up their spirits. They feel like, wow, if he can do it, we can do it too. That's it for this edition of Immense Possibilities. You can find out more, or send us your suggestions at immensepossibilities.org or visit our Facebook page and like and share us there. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeff Golden. Until next time, please do what you can do. Thanks for watching to learn about tonight's immense possibility. You can watch any of our past programs anytime at immensepossibilities.org.